And so I, want, I have a lot of questions for them. I mean, look, I think the good thing about it being on your head, assuming you could, right, Matt, like have it on, like you could grow hair over it? No? Uh, it's going to be hard. I think because we didn't see the needle going in the head. It I'm looks still real to dubious. me, though. It looks real to me. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Welcome to The Jump. I'm Rachel Nichols alongside NBA champ Matt Barnes. ESPN senior writer Zach Lowe joins us from Connecticut. Coming up today, the eight-year anniversary of the Thunder trading away James Harden to the Rockets. What if they, you know, didn't break up the big three of KD, Russ, and James? We will discuss that oh, later boy. in the show. First, though. Welcome to the NBA roller coaster. You know, it's one thing to say, so how about starting next season on December 22nd? It's another thing to actually make that work. And with this Friday is the deadline for the league and union to come to an agreement on so much of this. The next three days are going to be full of ups and downs, loop the loops and all the rest. Like, how's this for a twist? Yesterday, we got Danny Green on the Ringer NBA show proclaiming that if the league really does start next season 10 weeks after the NBA finals, he doesn't expect LeBron James or several of the other Lakers vets to show up for the first month. I think most guys, if they said we start in December, I think they're like, I'm not going to be there. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. If I had to guess, if I had to guess, because we have a lot of vets on our team. LeBron's been in the finals 10 years out of his 17 years, which is unbelievable mentally. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's training to do that and to have that quick of a restart. I wouldn't expect to see him there. I wouldn't expect to see him probably for the first month of the season. I totally get where Danny is coming from on this. I also have to say, if the NBA is handing out championship rings the night of December 22nd, I would expect LeBron James will not only be accepting his ring, but will be playing in that game. And personally, I really like the overall idea of such a quick turnaround. All last month, when NBA owners kept indicating they wanted to wait to start until they were allowed to have a meaningful amount of ticket-buying fans in the stands, I kept saying on this show that, well... I want a pony, but that wasn't happening anytime soon either. And at some point, it becomes dangerous to the health of the sport to just keep waiting and waiting for medical advancements that could be six months away or more. By the way, after I said that, several of you out there actually offered me a pony, which is sort of missing the point, but also delightful. So thank you. Anyway, I think it is great that owners seem to have come to terms with the fact that, like so many of us, they are just going to have to adjust their expectations for this year. There will be less money to go around. The work conditions won't be ideal. At some point, you just dig in and do it. Avoiding your finals running into the Olympics is smart. Avoiding your finals running into football season is smart. Preserving Christmas as the NBA's day is smart, not just generally in the long term, but specifically this season, when starting in late December will reportedly prevent the league from losing additional hundreds of millions in revenue. Plus, you get the fun music. For more of two-thirds of the league's teams, the ones that didn't go deep in the playoffs, it won't even be that short of an offseason. Uh, of course, just because something is a good overall idea doesn't mean it isn't going to be super complicated. There is the negotiation with the players who are likely going to be asked to put up to 40 percent of their salaries in escrow to balance out the projected loss of revenue. There's figuring out how many games the season would be. 72 is a popular number right now, but could that change? And how is the league going to handle positive COVID tests if it plays outside a bubble? We've seen non-bubble leagues like the NFL already have to reschedule games, and that's with the benefit of six days between games and properly testing and containing outbreaks. The NBA would be attempting several games a week with players who sweat and breathe all over each other, not in a giant open-air stadium, but in a closed arena. And what about the states where the local government does allow, say, even just 500 fans in the building? Are, are players going to be okay with breathing all of their air, too? There's also the issue of the calendar leading into the December start. Right now, the NBA draft isn't scheduled until November 18th, and free agency not until after that. If training camps start December 1st, it is hard to make the math work on the time needed for players coming from far away to quarantine. And if a team does have a run of COVID ripped through the building, there's no pad built into training camp for players to get back onto the court in any kind of game shape, not to mention the threat of actual serious illness. It's a lot. So leave your sunglasses and hats at the turnstile, buckle up and get ready for quite a ride. All right, Matt, so how do you think players 
like LeBron say, as Danny Green pointed out, will handle the shortened offseason if training camps really are back on December 1st. I don't think they'll like it. I think it's too fast. And I'm not looking at dollar signs or revenue for owners or anything. I'm looking at players. And not only was last year a, a unique situation physically, emotionally, but it was mentally draining. Yeah. You know what I mean? And people don't take that into account too often when you think about athletes. Those guys were mentally exhausted along with physically exhausted. So I think to start this fast after the season just ended is a bad move. I understand you want to, you know, ratings might be down. You want to capture that Christmas Day game. But to me, it's more about having your star players ready uh, to play for the long haul. And I think if you start too early, you're going to risk injury uh, with a lot of these guys that had to make a long run into the playoffs. Yeah, when money faces off against purity of the game, <laughs> money wins. And money is going to win this, too. LeBron and Anthony Davis are going to show up on Christmas or December 22nd. Whether they play or not is the question. And I do think there will be some load management. There will be some easing into the season. There will be some straight-up ugly basketball for the first two months of the season. And forget about all – and that's even leaving aside all the complications with the virus that, Rachel, you talked about in the monologue and the schedule and all of that. But, look, I mean, some players haven't played already in seven months. Some of those guys are probably in great shape. Keep doing what you're doing. Some of those guys, maybe they got out of shape. They got to start ramping up. It's going to be different for each player. It stinks for the teams who won the championship or got to the finals in the bubble. It is a quick turnaround, and everyone's just going to have to deal with it because money is going to win this argument. That's the bottom line. Well, the thing to remember, too, is it's not all players. And, and look, the bottom eight teams in the league, Matt, were asked to sacrifice, right? They did a bubble without them. And those eight teams were told, hey, sorry about this. You're just not going to play for maybe up to even a year. Now it's not going to turn out that long. But right. still, we're leaving you out for health yeah. and safety reasons. And this is going to go on without you. Well, now it's the top eight teams that are basically going to be asked to sacrifice. And that's who most likely you're going to see a majority of those top eight teams back in the playoffs. I think the only teams that got left out that are going to be in the mix here are Golden State and Brooklyn. But mm -hmm. outside of that, to me, I, I, like I said, I think you want to err on the side of caution when it comes to this. And I understand what Zach is saying. I mean, money rules the world, not only in sports, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's the world in general, so money probably will possibly win. But I agree. If they do come back uh, before the turn of the year, it's going to be a lot of management. They possibly could play on the opening night because it's so much energy right. and emotion. But then you, and, and then, then we're going to start complaining about the load management, starting with some <laughs> of these guys that had to make these runs. So it's a tough situation. You know, I wish them the best of luck trying to figure it out. Yeah, and that is going to be tough if we get into January and the Tuesday game is two teams playing without stars. And it's not going to look quite how it looks in right. the bubble, right? Unless every arena builds those huge video boards. No matter how dramatic you make the lighting, you're going to see empty seats. You're going to see some of the stuff we've seen in the other sports that make it just feel kind of more rec league -y than really official. So they're going to have to work out a lot. They're also going to have to work out the calendar, Zach, just to get to the start of the season. Right now, the NBA draft is scheduled for November 18th. Now, that was moved back about a month. I was always curious, why move it back so far? And now I want to know, are you going to move it forward again? Because if we're going to start training camp on December 1st, Zach, wouldn't it be smart to give yourself a little extra time? Just move it, maybe just push it another week earlier or something to let free agency and teams report I mean, and players I, come from overseas? I think the way they're going to build in the extra time is probably to do the opposite, which is move free agency up from a potential start date of December 1 to like maybe right after the draft. Maybe we'll just do one cycles right into the other. Just get everything all rolling together in one. I have true. I made a couple of calls today. I have not heard any buzz about moving the draft earlier. I'm not even sure they could do that now. Maybe it's too late. I mean, the reason they pushed it is because we still don't know what the salary cap is. We still don't know what the luxury tax is. We still have no idea what the salary cap is going to be. And we have some idea.